Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I want to talk about some authors I want to complete. Also known, I suppose, as auto-buy authors. I am a very distracted reader. I don't really tend to stick to one particular author or even just one particular genre. And so there aren't many authors that I have actually read every single book from. And the authors that I have actually read every single book from are probably authors who haven't written a whole lot of books, like Jane Austen. In fact, there's only one author where I've read every word they have written. Essays, plays, novel... That should give you a hint. Yes, that author is Oscar Wilde. Uh, when I was a teenager, I read through a gigantic, complete edition of Oscar Wilde, which contained everything he'd ever written, the terrible poems he wrote as a teenager, to the brilliant and underrated essays that he wrote as an adult, as well as his one novel and his many plays. Uh, but other than that, I am not very much of a completionist, I think that's a word, when it comes to authors. However, there are a few authors that I have read one or two books from, in some cases even more, and that I've loved so much that I know that over the course of my reading life, I will eventually have read every single book that they have published, or at least every single novel that they have published. I am not that keen on poetry and short stories, so I make no promises there. Let's get right into those authors. I say over the course of a lifetime, but the first author is actually one whose novels I will have finished by the end of this year, and that is Anne Bronte. Unfortunately, she only ever wrote two novels, one of which, The Tent of Wildfell Hall, I read two years ago, and the second of which, Agnes Grey, I am planning to read this year in the Victober readathon. So this is a what I call a very achievable goal. I am going to complete this author's novels by the end of 2020. That's encouraging, you know, set yourself goals you can achieve. I loved The Tent of Wildfell Hall. This is a Victorian epistolary novel which follows a young woman and her mysterious past. That sounds like the summary of every Victorian novel ever, but I implore you, if you like Victorian fiction, or let's say if you're not opposed to Victorian fiction, and if you like Charlotte Bronte or Emily Bronte, give Anne's novel The Tale of Alpha Hall a go. It is stunning. Stunning. It's so ahead of its time. It reads incredibly modern and at the same time very, very Victorian. It's about personal freedom. It's about personal rights. It's about women's rights. It's about being trapped in a situation that you don't see an out of. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful story and more people need to talk about this. Take the opportunity this Victober and read The Tent of Wildfell Hall. About Agnes Grey, her other novel, I have heard that it's very, very different to The Tent of Wildfell Hall. Most people seem to prefer one or the other. Since I'm so in love with The Tent of Wildfell Hall, I don't have the highest hopes about Agnes Grey, but I would be missing out if I didn't give it a go at least. Right, that's our one classics author out of the way. The rest of these authors that I want to complete are contemporary. Well, I say contemporary. Some of them are dead, but they haven't been dead for long. So let's move on to the second author, Sarah Waters. Uh, she is one of the authors that I've only read one book of so far. This one, Fingersmith. This one's from 2003. And I loved it so much that as I finished the last page, as I closed the book, I thought I need to read all of this woman's other novels and every novel that she's going to publish henceforth. If I'm not mistaken, Sarah Waters has so far published six novels, um, but she is still working, so I'm sure there's going to be more added to that backlog. I have absolutely no doubt that I will enjoy her other books as well. Maybe I won't love them quite as much as this gorgeous Victorian adventure. Ugh. Trying to summarise this book in a few words is just impossible. It's what you want in a historical novel. It's It feels authentic to its time, but it feels modern in its outlook. It has adventure, it has romance, it has plot twists, it has betrayal, it has beautiful writing. If her other novels check off even just two or three of the things on this list, then I will be very happy. 
Oh, I say we're done with classics. That's not entirely true because one 20th century classics author who I want to complete is John Wyndham. I have read two of his books so far, both mid-century post-apocalyptic novels. Uh, one, his possibly his most famous work, The Day of the Triffids, is about killer plants and uh, people trying to survive in a world where they can't see and also the aforementioned killer plants. The second novel that I've read of his is called The Kraken Wakes and that is actually my favourite of the two that I've read and that is about alien sea creatures taking over the world. What I love about his writing is, again, that is so grounded in the time that it was written in, you know, the middle of the 20th century, and yet it is quite modern in outlook. One of the things I've enjoyed about both of his novels that I've read is how he portrays couples. So in this one there's a little bit of a romance subplot, our male main character meets a lady and they get on, and the other one, The Crack and Wakes, that I read uh, actually is centered around a married couple. And I really enjoy those relationship dynamics. Often in books, I feel like the author uses tension in a relationship to bring tension into the novel. And what I enjoyed about these books is that both of these relationships, uh, both the sort of beginning romance of this novel and the established married relationship in the other novel, feel very real and very grounded and very unproblematic and that's it's kind of sad that that stands out but it really really does and especially surprising you would think from a novel that was written in the 1950s but both books are some of my favorite kind of dystopian fiction in that there is everything falling to bits but the story itself is not too action-packed. They are quite slow-paced novels, they're quite introspective novels. Yes, there are killer plants and sea creatures from Jupiter, but really what you're reading about is how humans cope with stress and cope with tragedy. And I really enjoyed reading that in both of his novels. And I'm sure that his other novels, most of which are the same kind of genre, they are science fiction, dystopian, post-apocalyptic, variations thereof, I'm hoping to find that in his other works as well. And now for an author whose entire work probably makes up a whole big bookcase, and that is Terry Pratchett. When I say I want to complete Terry Pratchett, I mostly mean I want to complete his Discworld novels, although I have read one of his other novels, The Carpet People, and I have got another one of his novels on my TBR. I don't remember the title of it, but it's about cats. However, Terry Pratchett is most known for his Discworld books. Okay, so the Discworld novels aren't really a series because they don't follow each other in plots. They are more like several series set in the same universe and you can kind of dip in and out of these series as well so you don't have to actually read them in order. It's a very strange collection of books and how they all fit in together is quite interesting to observe. I've read uh, possibly six or seven of the Discworld novels so far. I've got another five on my TBR, but really this is a series of books that I will complete over the next decades. I can't really read these back to back. The tone is absolutely hilarious and very quirky, but there's only so much quirkiness I can take in my reading. So I, I like to pepper these into my uh, other general reading for a bit of uh, change up of mood and vibe. I am really hoping to collect the entire set. I don't know how many there are. I have a feeling it might be around 40 novels that are official canon Discworld novels. They tend to accumulate in charity shops, so as soon as I'm back in the shops, I, I hope, I'm hoping to pick up a lot more of these. My next author is a bit of a booktube darling, and that is Kazuo Ishiguro. I have read two of his books so far. This one, The Remains of the Day, my favourite of his, and Never Let Me Go, which is talked about a lot on booktube. I'm sure you've heard about it. Those two novels are both very different to each other. The Remains of the Day is a piece of historical fiction. It's set in the 1950s. It follows a lonely butler on his road trip to the West Country as he reminisces about the past. 
The Remains of the Day is set in a slightly alternative 1990s and it follows a group of teenagers at a boarding school. So even just from the setup you can tell that Kazuo Shiguro doesn't like to stick to one genre, stick to one setting, stick to one type of character. And that's why I know that even though I've only read two of his six novels, with one coming out next year if my notes are correct, he likes to play with genre and he likes to play with setting. And I enjoy that. What I have loved about both of his novels, what links them, is a really beautiful way of writing and a really beautiful way of characterizing. The people in his books feel like real human beings, even though an aging butler from the 1950s and me, we are worlds apart in our lived experience. And yet I loved spending time in this butler's head and his butler's mind as he goes about his butling day. I think I will enjoy the rest of his work as well. Never mind which genre he drifts into. I know that he's written books that are more historical fiction, books that are more fantasy, books that are more sci-fi, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to love all of it. One of my latest, more contemporary discoveries has been Diane Setterfield. I read this novel, Once Upon a River, last year and really, truly loved it so much. Similar to the Sarah Waters book, this is historical fiction done so beautifully. Um, this has got a little bit more of a, I don't want to say magical realism, but a, more of a, like a fairy tale vibe to it. It's ethereal and beautiful. And even though it's set in the real world, it almost feels like a tale, like a folk tale. I really loved that writing. As you might be able to tell from the title and cover page, this story focuses on several characters around the River Thames as they try and solve a very strange mystery of a girl that was found in the river. And I really got lost in this book. I loved all of the characters. I loved how alive and human they felt. And at the same time, how much they felt like characters in a story. Really beautiful writing. And that's why I know that even though this is the only one of her books that I've read so far, that I'm going to love her other work as well. I know that her, I think it's her debut novel, The Thirteenth Tale, is a booktube favourite. And honestly, I'm just uh, waiting for my next paycheck before I go and buy myself a copy of that, because I am ready to dive into her beautiful writing once more. Overall, she has released three novels so far, but as I've said, she's active in writing, and I'm sure that she will be one of those authors that I splash out for new releases for. The next author, and the only one that I can't show you a nice physical copy of a book right here, is Octavia E. Butler. She has written, if my numbers are correct, 15 novels, plus a few short story collections, but as I said, I'm not that bothered about short stories in general. I have read her two most popular works, Kindred and Parable of the Sower. Kindred was gorgeous, really fascinating concept. It is the story about time travel. It's a story about a woman diving deep into her own personal history and the history of her country and trying to fix it and trying to survive at the same time. It's a really gorgeous book. Again, reads a lot more modern than other books from the 1970s that I've read. So Kindred was intriguing. But when I read Parable of the Sower, I knew that I wanted to read every novel this woman has ever written. Parable of the Sower is a near-future dystopia. It was written in the 1990s, scarily takes place round about the year 2020, I think, 2021? Anyway, scary close to home. And uh, this is an epistolary novel which is the diary of a teenage girl protagonist. She lives in a walled community in LA as the world is falling apart around her. The dystopian world in this is stunningly done in that it's so terrifying and realistic that it feels, it hits very close to home. It, you can picture yourself in this position, you can picture yourself trying to survive in that kind of a world. But like any good dystopian novel, 
it isn't just about the world falling apart and people trying to survive. It's about faith and community and about a girl ultimately growing and becoming a truly charismatic, I don't want to say powerful, because that seems like such a cliche. She becomes a very charismatic and very efficient person in that she learns how to get the things she wants in a world that is very unkind to her. And finally, a bit of a controversial choice, Donna Tartt. And I say controversial because people seem to never love her entire works. People seem to have one Donna Tartt favourite, and it's usually the secret history or the goldfinch. I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone who actually really liked her third novel. In fact, I can't remember the title of that third novel. But she seems to be a very loved or hated kind of an author. She's also a very, very slow author. I think in, in her past three decades, she has released exactly three books. So I guess at least that's an achievable goal for me. But I'm very curious about this. My opinion on The Secret History is complicated. I can't say I understand exactly why I love this, this novel so much, because it has so many things that I really hate about novels. And yet I was so drawn to the story and I couldn't put this book down until I'd finished it. And that alone is enough to make me put her on this list of authors I want to complete. I need to know more about how this woman writes. I'm so intrigued by the fact that people love this book and then hate her other novels, or love her other novels and hate this book. That makes me curious about her. And since so far she's only written three novels, I'm pretty confident that I will get through her work eventually. So that was it for my autocomplete. Autocomplete is a different thing. So that was it for my auto buy authors I want to complete. Let me know who your authors are that you really want to complete. Let me know if you uh, have read other books by these authors that I've mentioned, which one I should pick up next. Also let me know, it probably won't put me off, but let me know if you've read a book by one of these authors that disappointed you because you loved their other works so much. Thank you for watching. Bye!